important to remember that the experience of aging is a very diverse experience and that there is no one picture of what aging looks like. So the, the people that St. Barnabas has historically served have been people who have had lower incomes and because they have lower incomes, um, it, it creates a vulnerability with, uh, with them being able to age successfully in the community. The people that St. Barnabas uh, serves are people that on average live on an income of anywhere between $1,200 and $1,600 a month. If we're talking about the city of Los Angeles and rents the way that they are, uh, what we see is older adults that will many times be spending about 70% of their income on housing. So let's say they're making $1,400 a month and they do have a subsidy. Uh, they Let's say they have a Section 8 voucher or they're in a rent controlled building. Um, let's say that they're spending, you know, $1,100. That's a really good number uh, on a studio apartment. You're talking about someone after you've paid rent having $300 left. You need to provide food. You need to have a cell phone. You need to pay your electric, your gas. You need to be able to finance the cost of your transportation. Even if that, you know, is public transportation, there's still a cost associated to that. What we don't talk about is, you know, the, the mental, the psychological and the emotional impact that that has on people to live in that context and to operate in that existence month after month after month, not knowing what you'll do. all of that is the issue of isolation uh, and people uh, losing loved ones around them and their social circles getting smaller and then you you know realize the intersectionality of that and health and if somebody has declining health it, it makes it even harder for them to get around and so you see where this intersection of of health and uh, my social network getting smaller makes it harder to recreate those options. So that's an issue that we see at all income levels. Um, but one of the biggest challenges is the isolation piece. Because when the older adults come into the senior center, whether they have lunch here or they take part in classes, they're able to socialize or they just come to connect or enjoy our garden. So the socialization, the isolation piece is very key. Definitely before the pandemic started, um, St. Barnabas was a social connection for our seniors. And uh, they, they really enjoy the classes and, and eating together and, and just coming to see us and people knowing their name was important. It, it, it was just wonderful. Right now with the pandemic, I think it's important to continue keeping in touch with our seniors. Um, they really do appreciate a phone call and just to know that somebody actually cares that they're okay. Somebody who may be feeling uh, isolated before and now with this situation, it can cause more anxiety and depression. So those are the situations that we're dealing with. But at the same time, we're getting resources from our management team, the senior leaders too, how, to, how we can help the seniors and the circumstances uh, to avoid them to feel uh, uh, feeling more badly, you know, in this situation. But yeah, those are we still have our case management services. We still have our calls that are coming in. We are doing wellness calls to all of our older adults, those who are in case management and those who are not in case management. The folks that used to walk through our doors for meals or to play a table game or to engage around a movie, we are still calling all of those folks. You know, it's been interesting in the light of COVID and the stay at home orders that we've had and how we've, you know, been able to connect with our, our neighbors and our friends via Skype and telephone. And we've been able to hear their pains and, you know, how challenging it is for them to stay at home and how hard it is to be isolated from the people that they love and care about. And it's interesting because that vulnerability of being isolated is a vulnerability that we have been uh, trying to shed light on for older adults for many, many years. And that now that we all understand how impactful social isolation is, 
Now we need to be even more steadfast in making sure, okay, we're developing public policy that in a normal day, normal life, everything's back to normal. The older adults are able to get around and have whatever they choose as their form of social connection. Uh, you know, and that the system is responsive to meet those needs. But we, you know, we haven't been at a place to have people really understand. So it, it's promising now, actually, that that we're going through this.